Uh, should note what a weird what a weird way to start the day, Tom. I have to tell you, I I find it a bit bizarre. I, I don't know about you, but um, right off the bat, if we're going to start the day as we're wont to do these days with what's happening at Florida State football practice. Now they were in shells today. I was not there at practice today. It's worth noting. I did not attend practice today. I did not see this with my own eyes. I was uh, recording a different show that soon we'll be able to talk about. Good but I'm excited Christmas about. at yeah. some point. Can we say what it is? Well, I don't know. When, am I allowed? Am I not allowed? Why am I allowed? Not allowed? I don't know. Uh, we should be celebrating. I'm excited for you. I've got nothing to do with it, and I'm excited because it might be giving people information that they might want, I don't know, maybe on a Thursday on this program. Just a hint. Well, we're starting to preview and do a lot more stuff with it. And today was the first recording uh, officially where we were previewing games. And, you know, this gets me to a reminder here, first of all, and I'll get back to Florida State in a second. But it gets me to a couple of things. Uh, that's going to be August the 28th, I do believe, our big celebration for everybody. That would be uh, September, September the, 4th. the 4th. That's right. Not August 28th at all. Yeah, yeah. The following Saturday. Who knows what the hell is happening on August 28th? September the 4th is when we're going to be hanging out, not August 28th at all. I'll be the only one there August 28th. Like, where in the world? We have lost our appeal. So, Tom, why aren't you here? Yeah, I'm what, at a golf tournament, what's Jeff. Happened, Jeff. I'm participating in a golf tournament. Um, yeah, so it was weird. Uh, yes, the, the bottom line is uh, September the 4th, we will have the Jeff Cameron Show slash Libations Friday Fest, as we like to call it on a set. Well, it'll be on a Saturday. Uh, and, and, and listener appreciation, more most importantly. That's what I should emphasize. Uh, and we'll be giving away all kinds of cool prizes, including a grand prize that is a... Oh, it's a killer, man. It's going like to be fantastic. A humdinger. So by Monday of next week, we'll have everything ironed out about the details. We already know, you can pencil it in, folks, that it's going to be 2 o'clock on Saturday the 4th with our friends at the Corner Pocket Bar and Grill. Mm -hmm. It's not official, official, but I mean, what are we doing here? What are we doing? It's It's more... It's more committed to than maybe, you know, a kid saying yes to a school in, in July. Like, you know, this is pretty this much is an LOI. Much more this committed. is, I mean, we're just waiting on the facts. So, so we're good there. So maybe maybe the way for me to broach the subject of today's football practice uh, that I did not attend but heard about is to instead listen to the head coach himself. Like, let's let's parse this because I think there are some pretty obvious answers here. Now, I am going to speculate. That's what I'm going to do. I'm known for it. I'm going to speculate. Uh, and, and, and really, that's all we're left to do because it's not as if what we hear here in a moment doesn't strike you as odd. I mean, that's everybody, I would think. So let's listen to this, and and then then I'll respond with my observations here just based on what Mike Norvell, the head coach, had to say today after practice. I've had three pretty, uh, pretty good, pretty good days. Uh, you know, the workload's been high. Uh, I really like like the uh, the competitiveness that we're showing. Just continuing to to refine the uh, the fundamentals and the specifics of what we're trying to accomplish. So, um, I thought it was a good day. You've really been uh, trying to get a good look at the the two young quarterbacks. Uh, I've really been pleased with you know Chuba and uh, and Tate these last few days. You know, we've had a, had a big workload. You look at the scrimmage, and I would say uh, you know McKenzie and Jordan. You know, you know probably took overall about 85% uh, of the snaps. So we wanted to get a few days here uh, this week to, to let those young guys, you know, show their growth, you know, from the scrimmage. And I think both those guys have really taken advantage of those opportunities here. Uh, you'll get some reps with the first group and, and trying to mix and match that. So um, good work days. Um, tomorrow will be a, a, a special teams emphasis, also continuing to work some uh, some other situations, you know, two minute drills, things like that. So uh, hopefully we continue to build off of uh, you know, what we've been installing here this week and, and be a little bit crisper tomorrow when it comes to that. Quarterback maintenance, is that part of the course for you or is it just? Yeah, absolutely. We're going to continue to continue to work those guys, making sure we get a great evaluation of each uh, of each of the guys. Um, you know, uh, it's one of those things, you know, especially with the young guys, you know, there's times when you're working with the, the third group and, and maybe, you know, the line combination that you're with is a little bit different, uh, you know, trying to get them matched up with some of the uh, uh, the better guys up front and some of those receivers to see how they respond. And uh, I think they've done a nice job with it. Okay. Uh, I... <laughs> so how many days away are we from the, the first game? It is, what's today? I'm losing track of the days. Today's the 18th? Yeah, that's right. So, yeah, like 18 days, something like that. I, I mean, 
basically, the head coach just told you that the third and fourth string quarterbacks, now, that this is not speculation. He just said it. Basically, the third and fourth string quarterbacks got the vast majority, if not all, from what we can tell, of the snaps today at practice. He also mentioned last few days. So I think it's it's fair to assume that. Well, know. okay, Milton, uh, we know, uh, sat out uh, of Friday's practice. Uh, In Jacksonville, yes. Mm -hmm. We know that. That's mm -hmm. a fact. Yes. And he was held out. And that was, what was it called? Deload or some such? Conference? That's correct. Yeah. Yes. Okay. So he missed that practice on Friday. Now, today is Wednesday. He missed today's practice. Um, that doesn't strike me as uh, as ordinary, as normal. doesn't strike me as – I mean, now, again, that may not mean anything long-term in, in as far as he can win the job, not win the job, he's going to play football uh, and meaningful football, meaning rep, meaningful reps at the most important position on the field or not. I, I don't know. We, we do have a little bit of time. I'm just noting that that is interesting, and one would speculate, as I am, that either he's nursing soreness of some sort. I mean, this is this is what I'm thinking out loud here, okay, guys? Nobody's told me this. I would say that either, you know, because a lot of times when camps start up, uh, and we see this in baseball a lot too, there's just arm soreness that comes with it because you throw so many balls in practice all at once, day in, day out. Sometimes, sometimes a guy needs a little respite. Uh, other times, you know, if you're working your way back, all the way back as he is from a devastating injury, who knows? Are there complications? Does he have, uh, you know, some soreness in, in his knee or his foot? You know, I, I mean, it's it's something to think about. You know, he's it's it's been talked about a little bit. I know I've seen where people have commented that he's he's been a little gimpy on that foot. Now, when I've watched him, it's, it hasn't been that noticeable, but yeah, clearly he doesn't look, and I, I we're not allowed to speculate about injury, and I'm not. I know it may sound like it, but he, he doesn't look 100%. But then again, I can't really tell. Is that the byproduct from that old injury, that he's always going to have that, or is it something new? I don't know. But when you marry that with the fact that Jordan Travis didn't, it, it doesn't appear to have played much today, you can't help but wonder if there's not something else going on. That, that's all I'm saying. And, sure. and, and I don't mean anything nefarious. No. Camps around the country – uh, if you read camp reports, and I'm doing that now, I'm in the midst of doing that, partly because I want to be informed as we move forward for the start of the season about who's where, but also because of that other show that I just mentioned, that I just mentioned, I, I became Italian. I just the men. Uh, that I just mentioned. Uh, I'm doing a lot of research on the biggest games of the opening couple of weeks. You guys can deduce why. Uh, and I'm I'm going basically – to the equivalent of warchant.com in you know university to university reading their boards reading their reports reading their the equivalent of a of an Ira or a Corey or a a Gene a Tom a Jeff an Aslan an Austin who knows and i'm reading what they have to say and what i'm discovering is something we already know and we're all probably a little worried about and that is that various groups of people are missing time in practice because of COVID protocols. And, and so I don't know if that's, you know, you begin to wonder, you would begin to wonder. Now, sure. I, again, I do not know that it's just, okay. It's, it's interesting that your number one and two quarterback missed practice today or, or don't, don't take the majority of the reps today. Yeah. The majority of the reps, I, that's the way I, if you're taking Mike at his word is they need to evaluate the younger players right now. That's what he's saying. So in the middle of camp for a couple of days, after, right after the scrimmage, mm -hmm. they need to evaluate the younger quarterbacks sure. with the majority of the snaps. And I, like you, have not been out to practice the last two days. Of course, on Monday, it was not open to the media because of Tropical Storm Fred. So the last two times we've had the ability to go out there were yesterday and today. I was not there. But in the reports that I read, the practice updates from Warchant.com, I saw Chubba Purdy's name. I saw Tate Rodemaker's name. A lot. A lot. Who was the only two I quarterbacks' names you saw? That's correct. That's correct. Those are the only two quarterback names that I saw in those reports. Now, Mike is saying that they want to evaluate Chuba sure, and Tate because sure. they saw they saw eighty five percent or more reps to the veterans. Uh, oh, that's probably in, in the true. scrimmage that, on that Saturday. That part of it's probably true in terms of the oh, I think percentage I'm, of reps. All of it could be true. Uh, I mean, well, you know, it could be. Yeah, it could be. Uh, Might be. Yeah, I doubt it. Yeah, I don't think so. 
All right, that's fair. Yeah, I, I don't believe that to be true. The case being yeah. made is we just want to get a proper eval yeah, sure. on the younger guys. Sure. That's the case. That's what it is. I, I'm not buying it, but I don't want to make it to more than it needs to be. I'll tell you what happens from here. What happens from here is that everybody, and Mike knows this, everybody on that staff knows this. I mean, look, I'm not speculating about injury because I'm not saying anybody's hurt. I don't know if they are or they aren't, but there are only so many reasons why guys miss practice. And you then are free to kind of say, well, is it this? Is it that? Is it, you know, that's what people are automatically going to do because it's not like your right guard miss practice. Right. Well, or, or take more reps, you know, the, Take more reps. Take more reps. Okay. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> it's not like the first, and you know, you, you, your first and second string, and we don't know who's who just yet, but your first and second string quarterbacks coming into camp are without question Mackenzie Milton and Jordan Travis. And here in the middle of camp, we decided to get a good long look at Chubba Purdy and the Rodemaker. That's right. Because they don't get a lot of work with the ones, mm. you know, and, and we got to see if there is a, a full offensive line in front of them, how they work with that offensive line, how they work with those receivers. That, I will tell you. That's what's going on. I will tell you this. You know? I will tell you this. I really love, every time I'm at practice, uh, I, I really love the way that Ron Baker plays. And Chubbles look good, too. And so, you know, it's we've speculated about a couple of things, one of which is something to be happy about, and that is, I don't know how it helps us this year per se, but I do know that if those guys are getting opportunities with the first teamers and Jordan Travis continues to improve as a thrower, as a passer of the football, and we bring in A.J. Duffy, you start to feel very good about the kind of competition, fierce competition even, that there's going to be moving forward at that position. And that I want that. I really want that. Now, you would also begin to wonder – which of these guys long term decides this place ain't for me? But I mean, you can't really worry about that as a coach. You gotta you gotta create the uh, the environment where those guys get opportunities to compete and showcase their wares, and then whatever happens happens. I, I you know, big picture, we'll just see that from here. Do they practice for tomorrow or Friday? Or yeah, they've got practice yeah. every. So the media can go to practice tomorrow, Friday, Saturday. Yeah. It's closed on Sunday for a scrimmage. I intend to get out there. Hopefully enough of the behind-the-scenes work that's necessary is done so that I can get out there in the morning. But if I don't, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go to warchant.com right after 9 a.m. when I see some of the practice updates rolling in. I'm going to check the Tribal Council, make sure I've subscribed to the website to do all that. And then I'm going to look for names. I'm going to look and see what names are in there. If there's a nice catch by Malik McLean in 7-on-7s, seven I'd like to know who threw that to him. And we're going to find out, I think. I don't want the impression to be that I'm panicking because I'm not. I am just curious. My curiosity has been raised. I think it is interesting. I think it's uh, uh, somewhat uh, an oddity compared to what normally happens in a buildup to a season in practice. Well, that's I'll ask you, your personal opinion. Do you think this was scheduled that they wanted to see the third and fourth string quarterbacks uh, this after the first scrimmage for a couple of days where they take the bulk of the reps of the ones? You think this is previously scheduled? I don't, I don't if it was you, would you do it? No. Okay. That's what Coach Cameron would do. Uh, no, I try to get. I try to be. Uh, <laughs> I try to be uh, honed in on who I was going to have starting for me at quarterback and getting them all the reps necessary for my big game against Notre Dame. That's one approach. Now, now I would also tell you again if you've got a guy who's nursing some soreness and another guy who whatever maybe he's under the weather that day, it could be happenstance that oh, well, okay, we're without our top two. That sucks. Oh, let's use it as a great opportunity to find out who you know what Chub, where Chubba Purdy's at, where Tate's at. Okay, fine. Yeah, you got to make the best oh, of the situation without question. They're not lost reps. You're right. investing no, that, in the future of the program with those reps. That could end up that being is, a good thing. That yes. is legitimately a good thing for the program long term. It's just that yeah, we'll see those updates tomorrow. Who's throwing? I would also tell you this: that ultimately, and this is true, and it was true when they started camp. Okay. The bottom line is you you had a guy that transferred in that if he were healthy, if he were somebody that could get returned to form the way that he did at UCF, I mean, as highly decorated as he was, as good as he was, but we know that was a horrific injury. He's in he's in camp for the first time since 2018. Now I know he was here in the spring, obviously, but this is this right. You were always going to watch him very closely for two reasons. That was a devastating injury. You want to see what he can and can't do with that leg. So you're watching carefully. 
two, you want to see Kenny return to some semblance of what he was at UCF. Because if he does, you got yourself a nice player and you're very excited about where you're headed. And, and so people are already locked in on him, very locked in on him. So that's, that's going to always lead to some sort of speculation, always, okay, where's he at in the growth? Where, what's going on there? As for Jordan, you know, we saw a lot of Jordan Travis last year, but what else did we see a lot of with Jordan Travis last year? Injuries, a lot of injuries. So you go into camp, and let me explain context. This is why I'm doing this right now for everybody who thinks, well, God, this is wild speculation. No, no, no. You went into camp worried about the relative health of those two guys on a day-to-day -day basis based on their history. You would have to be. And so the first sign, if they miss a practice, and, and Mike probably hates this, Coach Norbell probably hates this because he knows it's going to lead people who care very deeply about Florida State football and are passionate about wanting the information and who are watching very carefully that quarterback battle between Jordan Travis and McKenzie Milton. He knows that if either of those guys miss any time, that's, that's really difficult to keep under wraps. That's very difficult. And it's going to do what? Lead to wild speculation because there's already fear that those two guys have an injury history. And I think that's all we're saying here is that that immediately got people's attention. There's no way on our boards at Warchant.com or anybody else that covers Florida State that that's not the first thing people are saying, that they're not immediately going, well, that that's curious. I don't know what happened, but let's try to find out what did. That could be your tact. Mine is <laughs> today was a great day for the long-term future of this program because of the reps we're investing in Chuba and Tate. I think it's great to see that they're working with the ones maybe, and the twos. Maybe, I buddy. think it's good for the long-term health of this program. Maybe. Today was another W for the Knowles. I mean, I, maybe. And you know what? All I know is this. What I've seen in practice and what Coach Dillingham said when you asked him a question is that Jordan Travis at this juncture was the guy identified as having played best. Now, there's 18 yep. days. We've got a lot of time. Let's find out what's going to happen from here. But, yeah, I, I'm every day that goes by, more and more, I'm be, beginning to, to acquiesce and concede to the idea that maybe McKenzie Milton doesn't start the season as the number one quarterback. Or that the reps are so split that you wouldn't call him the number one. Well, that's, you know, that's, no, yeah. that's just me. I'm right. just speculative. I, I, yeah. I, you know, I'm just saying, like, it's interesting to me to follow what context clues we have and what we've seen and what the coaches have said. And I just start to begin to think, hey, you know, Jordan could win this thing. Yeah, yeah, it could be George's job. Could very well be. It's Jeff Cameron Show, 93.3 Real Talk Radio and War Chant TV. Don't forget to hit like and subscribe so that others can find the program. It helps them out. It helps us out. And it's really easy for you to do. We appreciate it. More in a moment. Everyone has their own routine after a long day. For me, I like to take a walk with my dog, get some fresh air, maybe relax on the porch, and lay in my hammock in a nice shady spot. No matter what your routine is, you know the sound of those mosquitoes. It starts with just, then another, and then another. And before you know it, you're literally slapping yourself, running for safety inside. Pulse Termine Pest Control has an inexpensive solution to this persistent problem. Pulse has a program that treats the grounds, flower beds, shrubs, and standing water, and it controls mosquitoes year-round, which means you can take back control of your yard and quit smacking yourself across the face. Enjoy your yard again, mosquito-free. Call Paul's Termite and Pest Control today for your free consultation. For the elimination of termites or any other pest, visit Paul's online at callpauls.com. That's callpauls.com. This is Tyler from Barino Heating and Air. This summer, you can save money and stay comfortable. Ask about our annual service agreement with no overtime charges ever. At Barino Heating and Air, we're always there for you. Online at BarinoAC.com. Hey guys, it's Greg Tish. It's summertime, it's grilling time. But with a grill that just won't light, you're just going to end up with the summertime blues. Yeah, blues and barbecue go hand in hand. But if you get a custom outdoor kitchen built from Hearth and Patio, you'll feel like a rock star every time those flames kick on. They also sell a full line of incredible high-end grills like Fire Magic, Blaze, and Broilmaster. 
all designed to deliver the ultimate in beauty, performance, and durability. Everything you need to elevate your grilling experience can be found at Hearth and Patio. In fact, anything related to fire can be found at Hearth and Patio. Fire pits, gas lighting, indoor and outdoor fireplaces, wood stoves, and even custom-built pizza ovens. Go see for yourself. Check out their services and products online at hearthpatiotallahassee.com. That's hearthpatiotallahassee.com. Or give them a call, 850-727-4282. That's 850-727-4282. At Hearth and Patio, they keep the home fires burning. If you're an attorney who struggles with the balance of managing your practice and practicing law, consider Lexicon as your number one pick. From client intake to billing and all that comes in between, Lexicon doesn't miss a thing. Our comprehensive solution combines best-in-class software and services to take care of your firm's most critical challenges, automating many of the tasks that take time out of your day. It's all about giving you more of your billable hours back. And who doesn't love more revenue? No more searching for practice management that works. Lexicon marks the spot. Visit lexiconservices.com to learn what Lexicon can do for you. Have you wanted to speak a new language but thought it'd be too difficult or take too much time? Then try Babbel. In just 15 minutes a day, Babbel teaches you conversations that you will actually use. With 14 languages and lesson topics like travel, business, relationships, and more, you'll learn what matters most to you. Babbel, language for life. Learn a new language with ease. Go to babbel.com to try for free. That's B-A-B-B-E-L.com. We all want more energy, more strength, more results. Well, welcome to Orange Theory Fitness as you take a step towards feeling more alive today. Backed by science, Orange Theory's heart rate monitored workout is scientifically designed to keep heart rates in a target zone, spiking metabolism and increasing energy. Orange Theory Fitness is a one-of-a-kind group personal training workout resulting in more energy, visible toning, and extra calorie burn for up to 36 hours. Experience today with Orange Theory Fitness. To find out more, go to orangetheoryfitness.com. The Jeff Cameron Show, brought to you by Orange Theory Fitness. Two Tallahassee locations, Midtown on Thomasville Road, and Northside in the Village Common Shopping Center. Online at orangetheoryfitness.com. questions that have uh, hit the chat at uh, War Chant TV. Uh, yeah, there, there's you know people wondering why it, it was the way that it was and all that good stuff in terms of practice. So <clears throat> you know, I, I get that there's going to be a lot of opinions there. But Melissa, you, uh, you hit my heart because I have to tell you, I too was there when you were there. And uh, <laughs> I don't like what I heard from Mike Norvell today on the subject that Melissa brings up. So should I read Melissa? Let's read, let's read Melissa's question. And then you play the audio. It's a segue. She tuned it up for us. She did. This is a softball and I love it. Thank you. So she writes, so nice to have you both back. Thank you, Melissa. This fall is 30 years, 30 year anniversary of wide, right? One. I don't know why we're going there, Melissa. We don't want to go there. I was at FSU in 91. Me too. And that loss still hurts. Yes, it does. On that note, please talk me off the kicking game ledge. How's it looking? Well, Tom, if you would, please, let's hear about the kickers. Yeah, you know, I'll tell you, I think Alex, uh, starting off with the punters, I think Alex is at an exceptional camp. You know, just the, uh, the versatility of, of what he can do. Uh, you know, his pocket punting is is uh, really outstanding. I mean, the, the way that he's been able to work uh, in, in not only just the um, the distance of the kicks, but the hang time he's been able to create, I think that, that can be a major weapon for us. Um, and then the kick, kickers, they, they're they competing. They're competing every day in what they're doing. Uh, you know, I thought, Ryan, you had a couple of big kicks there late. Um, you know, we're putting them in challenging situations every day, uh, trying to, to force that, that uh, uh, competition and who's going to respond in the moment. And, um, you know, I'm pleased with how that, how that you know, kicking battle is going as well. We want to make kicks, and uh, we are making uh, we're making more you know making a good number of them. You know, still still continuing to uh, to, to push that, but uh, yeah, they're doing a nice job. <laughs> oh, that's good. 
I love uh, I love when a coach, and it's it's tough too. As a coach, you're in a bad situation. You get asked about a a, a kid. It's really hard in college too. I think it's a little bit easier in the pros because you can just be ruthless. They're paid professionals, and <laughs> they need to get their ass in gear. But but when you get asked about kids that who, whose psyche is probably pretty fragile, you're you have to search for words because. A, you're caught a little off guard by the question in the moment. And B, you're really careful to how you're going to answer the question when you know that you need to infuse these guys with confidence, that that maybe they're not the most confident bunch in the world. So when you go about the process of giving the answer, you get a lot of this. You get a lot of, well, yeah. like, I'm searching. I'm desperately searching for the right <laughs> We need word. to isolate that down. <laughs> <laughs> you get a lot of that. That makes me laugh. And you get a lot of random uh, fillers. And I, this is not a criticism. I'm just thinking about how, is there a better way to do it? Because you get a lot of this, let's state the obvious, because it buys me time. <laughs> oh. so, so you get that, that's a filler that buys me time. Well, I think it's like when somebody repeats the question. When somebody, when you ask a question that that person didn't want asked, this usually happens with a politician. While they think of a way to answer the question they wished had been asked of them, as opposed to the one that was directly asked of them in the moment, oftentimes they'll repeat the reporter's question while their brain is desperately searching for a way out of answering the question. So if you say... Yeah, this is you and Killarn, you know, maybe one night around 8.30. Were you at Gordo's, Jeff? Was I at Gordo's? <laughs> That's how you do it. Well... Yeah. <laughs> what was it? Which Gordo's? Was I at Gordo's? Who, me? The Pensacola Street location? No. No, no I was not. No. no. No, 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 no. That's But that makes me laugh. That is the best. It's just sort of, we want to make kicks. Uh, we, you know, there's a competition. <laughs> uh, I love it. That is so good. We want to make kicks. We're doing stuff, practicing. So hopefully that audio clip served as the get back coach for Melissa, who's on the ledge right now. We were able to grab her back, hey, pull her to safety. To Norvell's credit, while we're hyper focusing on how one answers tough questions that they wished had not been asked of them, that was a really smooth slide to, well, let's start with the punters. That's really well done, by the way. Boy, like, Alex, oh, I got to tell you. No, that's good. He immediately just grabbed that nugget that gives him a little bit of time. It's sort of the, well, let's, you know, Let's start with the punters. I mean, my goodness, what a camp. Alex has had a great camp. Meanwhile, his head's like, what am I going to say about these two slappies that we have? I mean, hon, why wouldn't what? I be a Gordo's? It's yeah. delicious. <laughs> yeah. The food is delicious. I could be worse places. You know, though, it does. It makes me laugh. It's sort of the, um, you know, I, I love what our punters are doing. Alex has had a really special camp. Uh, he has been very, very good. And, uh, you know, as far as the kicker goes, that is, that's a fierce competition. The bold move would have just been that answer would have worked. <laughs> right. It is a fierce competition. I think it's going to come down to the wire. These two guys are getting after it every day, head to head. It is, you know, one day one wins the battle, the next the other. So we're monitoring that very closely. But I can say from a punting standpoint, Alex has been absolutely spectacular. Next question. Boom, we've got this. Right. We're rolling on big river. Here we go. Now, if you are the riverboat gambler in terms of your answer, you would just answer about the punter. For long enough and oh, hope yeah. that you just People get to the next question. People forgot about the damn kickers. And after you're done with about the punter, then you look, you just look around at the scrum for the next person. Like, next. Go ahead. If you want to get, if you really want to, you want the Jeff Cameron Show PR firm to come swooping in in the moment, and you're able to freeze everybody that nobody else can hear or see you. You just walk up to Mike and say, "Tell a great story about a punter." Let's embrace a story about a punter you once knew or once played for you or somebody that is just a special person on this earth that happens to be a punter and give it, give me a good 10 minutes on that guy. And then, Oh, as far as the quarterbacks go, and then just go, just, just go from there. You know, when I was at Memphis in 2019, we finished top 10 in the country in special teams efficiency. We had an excellent punt. Yeah. His name was uh, Jack Wilson and Jack, Jack was, you know, when he arrived on campus, I wasn't sure he was cut out for major college football, big time college football. But the thing about Jack is he's got what I hope a lot of these guys have. And I'm seeing some of the day to day in practice. He had a, a, a stick to a, a toughness to him mentally and physically. 
And he didn't let his bad days get him down. And we all saw those days. And we were left to speculate whether or not he could make it. But Jack showed up each and every day, and he kept working on his craft. And lo and behold, by year two, I really felt comfortable sending him out there in big situations when we needed to win the hidden yardage battle. And by the time he was a senior, you guys saw, obviously, he was all conference, and he's got a tryout now with Arizona. I'm certainly hoping he catches on. I know he's mentally tough enough, and I know he'll work at it. So I feel like uh, the reason I bring that up is Alex has had such a good camp here. And since I've arrived, I've seen Alex kind of mature into a Jack Wilson-like figure where he is really, really perfecting his craft. Hopefully, it plays out that way in the fall. But I, I believe in, in his work ethic and his toughness right now. Did Anything else? That's it? Okay, thanks, guys. And we're out. There it is. And we are out. Mid-season form, buddy. We are it out. It is not August in the PR firm. No. No. That's we're in the middle of October. It. That's beautiful. There is no Jack Wilson punter Memphis. He was a slappy of a shortstop slash second baseman in Pittsburgh. That's correct. He went on to Seattle. He sucked for pretty much everybody he played for. But I don't know. I Maybe I'm scarred. I, I'm not entirely certain. But, yeah, that's that's where I went. Chad Pennington it. firing it across the diamond. <laughs> Woo! It's got a little rainbow to it. Uh oh. That's me talking to my son. He had to feel this one on his backhand. When he was the youngest uh, on the big field, and he was asking me about how he compared to some of the other kids. And I said, Well, you know, the thing is, son, if you watch your throws from third and then some of the older kids from third, you'll notice theirs are on a straight line. Yours has a little bit of a rainbow to it, a little bit of a rainbow to it. That should never happen, but it does happen in Little League Baseball, so I get it. But I was watching a professional do that every night. Well, that's uh, akin to two outs, runner on first base, ground ball up the middle. Wilson on the backhand flips the second, goes the short way. No, no, no. He goes the only way the he only can way. to get an out. This <laughs> is the only no way shot. he can yeah, go. It's the only way. Thank goodness he went that way. They got him. The game's over. Jeff Cameron Show, 93.3 Real Talk Radio and War Chant TV. Your local news now. School officials announced earlier in the day yesterday that school was called off for Tuesday at C.A. Gray Junior High School. The Georgia Bureau of Investigation confirmed they assisted the Moultrie Police in a death investigation outside on the school property. C.A. Gray Junior High School released a statement Tuesday evening saying the incident was non-school related and additional law enforcement officers will have a presence on campus when the high school opens back up today. Colquitt Regional Medical Center is in critical condition as COVID-19 cases surge. They're in and out of code treatment meaning all of their 99 beds are filled in the hospital and ICU. Chief Nursing Officer Adina Zinker said the staff is emotionally, mentally, physically, and spiritually exhausted. Around 70 COVID-19 positive patients are coming in every day for care, making it difficult to treat routine illnesses, and they're understaffed by about 30 nurses. This is Rachel A. with your Real Talk 93.3 Local News Update, brought to you by Mecklenburg Systems, Tallahassee's go-to Mac store. Check them out online at mecklenburgsystems.com. This is meteorologist Paul Frombley with your Real Talk 93.3 weather update. A mix of clouds and sun this afternoon with a chance for scattered thunderstorms. Daytime highs approaching 92. South winds 5 to 10 miles per hour. Chance for scattered thunderstorms tonight. Lows dip down to about 75. Partly cloudy skies. Sunshine mixed with clouds at times tomorrow. Chance for scattered thunderstorms. Highs level off around 94. This report is brought to you by the Lawn Johns. For all your landscaping and lawn care needs, visit thelawnjohns.com. Right now, 90. This is Dr. James Ryan Finn with Finn Chiropractic, encouraging you to unmask the cause of your problem. People mask problems with medicine, even with stretching or massage. But if the cause of your problem is pressure on your nerve, you need to unmask that cause. That's what we do at Finn Chiropractic. So if you or a loved one are having neck pain, back pain, or headaches, come in, get the phenomenal health exam, and let us unmask the cause of your problem. Remember, the chiropractor loves you, and there's nothing you can do about it. We all want more energy, more strength, more results. Well, welcome to Orange Theory Fitness as you take a step towards feeling more alive today. Backed by science, Orange Theory's heart rate monitored workout is scientifically designed to keep heart rates in a target zone, spiking metabolism and increasing energy. Orange Theory Fitness is a one-of-a-kind group personal training workout resulting in more energy, visible toning, and extra calorie burn for up to 36 hours. Experience a more vibrant life today with Orange Theory Fitness. To find out more, go to orangetheoryfitness.com. 
Greg Tish. Hey guys, this is Greg Tish, and you can listen to my show, The Greg Tish Show, every Monday through Friday from 6 a.m. to 9 a.m. But I am very excited, Matty Rowe, about this Thursday at 7 a.m. Who do we have? Bert Kreischer. The machine. The machine is here, and he's going to talk about the Birdie Boy Relapse. And I'm so excited to talk to the machine about his time in Tallahassee and his time at Florida State. Thursday morning, 7 a.m. This is going to be one heck of an interview. The Greg Tish Show, Monday through Friday, 6 to 9 a.m., only on Real Talk 93.3. The Jeff Cameron Show is a production of the Warchant.com Multimedia Network. Check out Warchant.com today for the latest news inside Florida State Athletics. That's Warchant.com. Now, back to Jeff on Real Talk 93.3. Uh, we have a number of exciting games to prepare ourselves for as sporting guys or gals. And Redemption Thursday does not start tomorrow on Thursday, but I do believe the following week it'll be time to get it on. Yeah, there's a slate of college football there's that a, weekend. There's a little so bit of football going on there. That's the uh, much anticipated that we discussed earlier this week. 1 p.m. kick between Nebraska and Illinois on Saturday the 28th. All right. Yeah, if you're Nebraska, I got a buddy who went to Nebraska in, in their heyday. And Nebraska has been fairly ineffective and meaningless in the big world of college football in the last number of years. It's striking to note their uh, demise going all the way back to uh, basically, I mean, when Solich ends up getting told to have a good day and they go to Callahan, they've not been right since. And that is a long time ago now. And they lack an identity that they used to have. They feel like, to me, they're in the wrong conference. Etc. So there's just a lot about Nebraska that doesn't seem to fit. The puzzle doesn't work anymore, unfortunately. But I'll just say this about that game. Illinois is just a steaming pile. I mean, that is a terrible football program. There is nothing going right at Illinois. They have little to no talent to speak of. If Nebraska doesn't win that game. Well, Nebraska is potentially Good God, man. They're in a little bit of trouble today because the AP came out with a report that they're in hot water with the NCAA. I didn't know the NCAA could still do something Does like it that. It really exists. I would ignore it if I were them. I would as well. But apparently they were holding off campus workouts. You're damn right they were. The bunker idea yes. from you over hey, there. Scott Frost knows it's time to get with the getting. I mean, this isn't working out. Pretty soon they're going to start calling me Harbaugh Light. I come back to my alma mater. Everybody's excited for me to get here. I'm rugged. I, I go scorched earth method, tell everybody that it's going to get worse before it gets better, which I think is the right approach. When you really stink, That's you got to be honest with folks. But, man, they haven't looked like they've improved at all. The allegations include, but are not limited to, those off-site coach-led workouts That's that, that they didn't want even other administrators to know within the athletic department. That's so awesome. Scott Frost yes. went really rogue even within his own program. That said, they are a seven-point favorite are the Cornhuskers yeah. over Illinois week one. Of course. That's your one o'clock kick at 3.30 Hawaii UCLA. That's the game on ESPN at 3.30. Yep, UCLA will win that game. And I don't know that there's much else that you would want to tune into, I'm but that's at least a, a couple of games. No, I'm tuning to every single one of those games. I it's that, UTEP, New Mexico State? Without question, I'm locked right. in. Southern Utah, San Jose State. Yep. yep. Oh, there's yeah. a little reluctance <laughs> there. That's a 10 p.m. kick. Oh, uh, 10 p.m.? What else am I doing? Let's go. Uh, watching the second quarter of UTEP at New Mexico State, which kicks off at 9.30. Uh, simultaneous. We got it going, baby. UTEP is a nine-point favorite in that game. Are they really? Mm -hmm. You know, when the old college football game existed, I sometimes was UTEP. I was usually Army, but every now and then I'd be UTEP. I'd build it up, Tom. I'd build win We want winners. Mine, miners, we want mine. winners. That's right. That's the chant. Oh, we would do it. I was always going to try to take a team that got to play frequently in the snow. And we were a run-first football team, Tom. When Coach Cameron took over, we were throwing away the old ways, and we were getting back to old-school, hard-nosed football. I let him know in no uncertain terms when I came at, into UTEP, we're running downhill, boys. We're running right at you. We're going to get up and do it again. That's UTEP football from here on out. Gone are the finesse days of throwing it all over the lot. We're wearing black shoes with black tape, and we're running downhill. It's a good message. I think the message for UTEP, if you're ever going to be their coach again, and maybe there'll be an opportunity for a, a dynasty mode in the near future, 
as the video game I would think rolls out. I mean, you got cryptocurrency companies just throwing 500 bones at everybody at Florida State. So I would think that we can get a video game in the hands of these kids so we can have our experience, Let's our go. shared experience. Our shared love and experience of that game adding to the sheer joy of a football season. But if you go to UTEP and you take that job, you'd say, well, what does everybody in the country want to do? They all want to throw the ball? We're going to run the ball. If Whoa. it's the opposite, in, yeah, we'll, we'll keep away. If everybody wants we'll to run the away. ball, yeah. then we need to throw the ball because we got to get different people. We're not going to get yeses from the four and five stars of this country, but we're going to get yeses from blue collar experts. Jump to the NFL. Speaking of investigations and allegations, those of sexual assault and inappropriate behavior against Texas quarterback Deshaun Watson are being investigated now by the FBI. Well. Uh, Rusty Harden, his lawyer, we all remember Rusty. Rusty, yes. Harden also said that Watson spoke to the FBI about allegations of extortion regarding one of 23 lawsuits filed against the quarterback, of which 22 are still active. That's the only reason that Rusty Harden would have had a reason to make that a public announcement, right? Like, hey, so just so you know, uh, this is what we have as the latest. I still think that the somewhat sad but not surprising aspect of this story because until we you know find out what officially is a charge and what isn't beyond just the plaintiffs and what's alleged, you know it, it doesn't do you any good to speculate. I don't know what happened. I know I, I I take away from this that Deshaun Watson really likes a good massage. That's all I can do. Clearly, he likes a good massage. Now that said, whether that was legal or illegal, we're we're finding out. We're Hopefully, we'll find out. So if you were hosting the Weekend News, the facts of the moment are that Deshaun Watson will find himself a good massage on the Instagram. But here's the deal. What I also know is that that has not kept the very desperate Philadelphia Eagles, amongst others, to really inquire deeply about Deshaun Watson's services. And that is just sorry. So they're probably sad, but not shocking. They're calling Rusty Harden, right? They're <laughs> yeah. saying, Rusty, what do you think here? What do we got? Yeah. No, that makes me laugh every time. They're just like, well, you know, we understand it's a delicate situation, and we're going to let the legal matters play and run their course, of course. We we, we will not intervene in any way there, and we owe it to the plaintiffs and all involved in this case to let the legal matter play out as it will. That said, if Deshaun Watson were to be on the trade block or we wanted to acquire said quarterback, during these very difficult times, I understand. What would it take for us to do so? That's how that conversation goes every day. I read that story. So you have all of these allegations, and they are just allegations right now. <laughs> Usually the last Potentially paragraph, serious, though, it yeah, should be very, very serious. Yes. But yeah. the last paragraph of those stories always reads, the Eagles inquired again last week about the services of the Sean Watson. <laughs> so two things there. They don't think they have a starting quarterback. And yet, oh, they're correct. Well, I agree with that. But here's what makes me laugh about that is that you really, there's a disconnect between what makes a very good fantasy football quarterback and what makes a good real quarterback in the real world trying to win games. Because currently, uh, the Eagles quarterback to be is a top 10 fantasy quarterback pick at quarterback, not, not. Not first round pick, right? Because he's going to get rush yard bonuses. He's just going to run right, for days. Yeah. Like it's it, and these are nothing yards, but it's funny. But maybe, maybe that's the case. Even I wouldn't take him in my top ten of, of fantasy quarterbacks, Jalen Hurts, because you know they're just going to key in on the run. Go ahead, Jalen, throw it over our heads. Every make, once in a while, you get us. So be it. Make a play, Jalen. Right. Mm -hmm. which is incidentally what the Eagles sideline is saying. And incidentally, what I think Florida State's defense has to do in this game against Notre Dame, don't try that at the house, Ooh, kids. Man, But what I'm telling you here is line up to stop the run because last year's game against Notre Dame was emasculating. It was humiliating to watch a team line up and tell you by formation, we are going to run the ball here just like we did a play ago and just like we did the play before that and just like we did the play before that. And guess what we think? We don't think you can do a damn thing about it. What do you think of that? Soft ass. It doesn't matter what you think about yeah, that. Because here comes another one. Here it is. Bohica. And there we were. And there we were just left to ponder. Bohica, buddy. What it means. What it all means. And the devastation that one feels when you're powerless 
to do anything about it. Mm. So please, Coach Fuller, let's line up, loaded for Bear to stop the run, and make the great Jack Cone beat us down the field, please. And if he does, and he may, but if he does, you doff the cap and you say, okay, okay. We're just that, that, That's what it is today. But it's far less emasculating than what happens when a team lines up and just says, here comes a counter. And you know it's a counter because it's the exact same formation we were just in with the exact same personnel that we were just in. And here it comes. And here comes another one right after that. And, oh, by the way, what do you think is coming after that one? You got a guess? <laughs> that's, that's Toss be- pass? <laughs> it's brutal. Before I go to break, I want to say shout out here to Ed, who writes, we're looking forward to seeing you and Corey at the Pensacola Seminole Booster Meeting next week. I still have a war champ. I will have more champ mugs and coffee for you and some for you to take back to Tom. That's Mr. DeLuna. Thank back you, Ed. There you go, Ed. You are a man that is going straight for the jugular there. Get going, a man of the heart, because I am a coffee-drinking Jesse. So, Ed, that's a perfect segue. Thank you. Once again, that's the second one of the show. Tonight, right here on War Chant TV, beginning just after 7 o'clock, there is a Wake Up War Chant live with Aslan and Corey, presented by DeLuna. Nice. Thanks, Ed. Yeah, it's a good thing. A little 7 o'clock action. I'll be prepping for my golf show. There you go. Northern Trust Open. Brooks Kepka. Oh, it's the North. <laughs> He's playing. Notable. Notable it, in the field. Yeah. It's a it's well, everybody's Brooks in the Kepka. field. Everybody's in the field. 14th hole. Northern Trust open, buddy. You should like the Northern Trust with the skyline of Manhattan in the back. Yes, oh, they, yes. they switch back and forth between Boston and uh Jersey. Yeah. yeah no, right. I'm looking forward to it. I'll be talking about it tonight on uh Beyond the Tips, Sirius X and PGA Tour Channel 92. First promo right here on these airways. Bam, Good job. Happened. Jeff Cameron Show at 93.3 Real Talk Radio. Crawfordville Auto and Tire. Crawfordville Auto and Tire. Oh, hey there. I was just singing the praises of Crawfordville Auto and Tire. They do just about everything. Complete engine rebuilds, brakes, shocks, tires, oil change, you name it, they do it. And they offer a 12-month, 12,000-mile warranty on all parts and labor. Most of the time, they can service your car the same day and offer towing to help you get to the shop. Now that's something to sing about. Open weekdays from 7.30 in the morning until 6 at night. Crawfordville Auto Repair and tires. Tallahassee's 30-year-old Funny Paper and American Legion Post 13 have joined forces to become Major Morale. The new ragazine has four more pages of post activities and military information that you probably never knew. But don't worry, it's still as politically correct and newsworthy as always. Okay, it's the same funny stuff. But it's still only available at the sponsor's locations like Keith Lawson Services, Tallahassee Automobile Museum, ABC Flooring, or Krispy Kreme Donuts. The country's best donut place has great different monthly specialty donuts like Ghirardelli, Oreo, Chips Ahoy, and too many more to mention. Sign up online at KrispyKreme.com for exclusive email discounts or download the app that lets you pile up rewards every time you order ahead. Krispy Kreme, America's favorite donut. When the forgotten poor are in need of healing, they wait for a ship unlike any other. Mercy Ships, a floating hospital staffed by volunteers, heroes of mercy who donate their time to save lives. Every human has the right to have a place at the table of the human race. If you could just see the smiles that you get when lives have been changed, then it would make it all worth it. To learn more about Heroes of Mercy, go to mercyships.org. You went online to switch your car insurance to Progressive so you could save money. But then you saw a friend request from an old summer camp buddy. And now here you are, clicking through photos of his kickball team from 2011. Oh, looks like they won the championship that year. Then he moved to Tulsa. Oh, a new tattoo. Yes, they said it was easy to save hundreds on car insurance with Progressive, but they forgot about the rest of the Internet. Progressive Casualty Insurance Company and Affiliates, National Average Savings by New Customer Surveyed, who saved in 2019. If you weren't the owner of Gordo's and all those wonderful restaurants, Eddie, what would you be doing? You know, I, I think I'd want to be a, I'd want to be, I don't know what I'd want to be, a boat captain or a cowboy. Do you know how to use a, a lasso? No. You'd have to do that if you were a cowboy. 
Yeah, but I've never even been on a horse. It's not my place to be on a horse. I agree. And the horse thanks you. Gordo's bringing the flavor and flair of Cuban food to Tallahassee since 1996. The Jeff Cameron Show brought to you by Orange Theory Fitness. Two Tallahassee locations, Midtown on Thomasville Road and Northside in the Village Common Shopping Center. Online at orangetheoryfitness.com. Longtime NBA journalist Jackie McMullen is retiring from ESPN. She will leave on August 31st. I'm not going to spend a lot of time on this, but Tom, I remember how excited you were to meet Bob Ryan. That's correct. And we both met him, but you got a chance to get, talk with him for quite a bit. And he was salt of the earth kind and, uh, and really tall. Oh, very tall and, and an interesting person to, to speak with. Yes. Uh, I met Jackie McMullen once years and years ago. And she is equally as kind and straightforward and interesting. You can and tell. You can yes, you can absolutely. She's like the tell. stern but cool mom. Like you can see it. Like that show around uh, the horn, right? Terrible show. Mm -hmm. There were a few people who could carry their clout into that program and still come away after that ridiculous program, looking like they were professional. And Jackie Mack is one of those. Yeah. Well, and also uh, that is a woman in a man's world at the time that she breaks into covering exclusively. And uh, I, I think informatively, certainly the NBA, so much so that she ended up gleaning great insight uh, that many other male journalists never did because many of the Boston Celtics whom she covered trusted her more over the years and would give her the straight dope. And later on, she expanded, of course, to the entirety of the league. But her knowledge is appreciated. And I just wanted to acknowledge that she is, in fact, retiring. Oh, look at you, Eric. Go ahead, Tom. Cue it up, buddy. Did he throw down with it again? What's up, oh, Jeff and Tom? I'll goodness. be in Tallahassee for Notre Dame. Drinks on me. Notre Dame going down. Okay. Woo! Yeah, I don't know. I don't know that um, I agree with you, Eric. I appreciate you, but I don't feel the same sort of confidence that many of the chat have over the last few days about the game. It's not, I'm not even saying that we're like jaded or cynical. I just, I don't think we have the horses right now. And, it's going to be hard to win the line of scrimmage over four quarters. And, you know, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I'm wrong. Uh, again, I've laid it. I've laid bare what I think the game plan to be would be, or or the, the best opportunity uh, to secure an upset victory would be. And I do think, and I don't. I'm not one of these guys like, well, obviously you want to get out to a good start. Like you could say that about any team in any game, but usually the underdog. That is kind of true. You need to be in it. You need to start to believe. Well, and you got to keep the yeah. crowd in it. Right, it's right. here and it's college football where emotion plays more of a role than it would on Sunday. As I want to do every time that comes up, I tell everybody that these are college kids. They're subject to the whims of emotion more so than the pros. And um, they don't always weather these these bouts of uh, negative play and poor results. Uh, so, you know, they, they can be front runners almost by definition just because – they're searching for that inner confidence. And this group, more than most, when you've had a downturn the way that Florida State has had, is searching for a reason to believe, to quote the great Rod Stewart. And so it is that I <laughs> – sorry. You almost got through that. Sorry, I had to do it. I mean, I, I heard reason to believe, and I went, eh, Rod hasn't been good in a very long time. But there was a stretch in the 70s. Now, that said, uh, that that – it is true, though. I, I think they have to have something to latch on to to begin to believe. Sort of like what happened in that North Carolina game was they got some some belief early on. They had success early on. They got out to a lead, then they had a big play. You got the pick six turnover, and the next thing you know, it's like, oh, we could do this. And even then, even then, hold. Right, yeah. Well, I think it's also important, though, to remember, just as the optimist qualifier here, that if this was the Notre Dame team roster from last year, we wouldn't have – as much hope as we do. But thankfully, there's a lot of turnover, so mm -hmm. you might be able to catch them confused. If you're watching us on YouTube TV, thank you very much. Do us a favor. Remember to hit the thumbs up and subscribe to War Chant TV. Your likes will help others find this program. We do appreciate it greatly, so make sure you do that. Uh, it helps us out quite a bit. Hour number two, forthcoming, right here on 93.3 Real Talk Radio.
handling of the U.S. withdrawal in Afghanistan. We have details from correspondent Bernie Bennett. Though Senate Foreign Relations Committee Chairman Bob Menendez criticized the Trump administration's agreement with the Taliban as wholly inadequate, he also didn't spare Mr. Biden. House Foreign Affairs Committee Chairman Greg Meeks became the first committee chairman to formally invite administration officials to testify on the withdrawal. He's unlikely to be the last. Republicans, including those who have previously been supportive of President Trump's May 1st timetable for withdrawing U.S. troops, have launched fierce criticism of President Biden's handling of the withdrawal. Bernie Bennett in Washington. State Department spokesman Ned Price says the U.S. is watching the Taliban very closely. We are taking stock uh, of everything that they have said. Most importantly, we are going to be looking for how they, at how they comport themselves, uh, at the way they treat their people. Meanwhile, the airlift from Kabul airport is back on track and being accelerated amid regular communication with Taliban leaders. Also at townhall.com, U.S. health officials have announced plans to dispense COVID-19 booster shots to all Americans. The plan calls for the booster doses eight months after people get their second shot of the Pfizer or Moderna vaccine. Home construction fell a sharp 7% in July as homeowners struggle to cope with a variety of headwinds. The Commerce Department reports the July decline put home construction at a seasonally adjusted annual rate of 1.53 million units. Applications for building permits, which can forecast future activity, rose 2.6% in July from the June level. It reached an annual rate of 1.64 million units. As correspondent Jeremy House on Wall Street, stocks are mixed. The Dow down 47 points. But the Nasdaq is up six points. More at townhall.com. Let's be boring and do a commercial about cash out refinances. It's Ryan, and our mortgage team will often have a listener say, I think I understand what a cash out refinance is, but can't that be bad for you sometimes? So let's hit on that. As with anything, it's certainly not the right move for everyone. If we don't have to, we don't want to add a bunch of years onto our loan or increase our monthly payment too much or pay more in the long run. But because home values have skyrocketed so far up the last few years, while rates have come so far down, we've seen many scenarios where listeners today can pull out a significant chunk of money from the new value in their home while lowering the years on the overall loan, while lowering their monthly payment and lowering how much they ultimately pay. The key is to just look at the whole picture and be honest with yourself about your situation. If you're looking for someone to show you your options, we our United Faith Mortgage. United Faith Mortgage is a DBA of United Mortgage Corp. 25 Middle Park Road, Melbourne, New York. Licensed mortgage banker. For all licensing information, go to Animalist Consumer Access. Corporate Animalist Number 1330. Equal housing lender. I license in Alaska, Hawaii, Georgia, Massachusetts, North Dakota, South Dakota, or Utah. Massachusetts, North Dakota. Summertime is color time. This summer, why not spend your time off with a home improvement project? You can use this time to try one of the most popular DIY projects. Painting. And you can find your favorite color with one of America's most popular paints, Benjamin Moore. Shop for all the best paint colors and paint supplies at Epps Decorating Center with two convenient locations in town. Find out more online at EppsDecorating.com. These recruiting updates are nothing but fluff. Are you wasting your time again on free blogs and social media to get the scoop on FSU recruiting? Yeah, it's all bait and switch. You're on warchant.com. What's really going on with FSU recruiting? Could be another top five class, but for the real scoop, you'll need to get your own Warchant subscription. What's it cost? Free. There's a 30-day trial offer. Just sign up and you'll get full access through signing day. And nobody has more accurate and timely information than warchant.com. You know I like free. Sign me up. Warchant.com, your ultimate, ultimate seminal source. source. Hot! Broadcasting live from Florida's capital city, this is the Jeff Cameron Show, brought to you by Orange Theory Fitness on Real Talk 93.3. Now, stop what you're doing and listen closely. It's time for the Jeff Cameron Show in 5, 4, 3, 2, 1...
I mean, Rodemaker got most of the action today at quarterback. I did not attend today's practice reading uh, the reports, though. It, it seems that those two gentlemen uh, got the uh, got the bulk, if not all, of the reps. And that, of course, leads one to wonder why that would be. I mean, obviously, those are two guys that you may end up needing, but not guys that you thought you would need right away this year, and certainly not two guys that you thought would be in the mix to uh, take a day worth of reps away from the potential quarterback battle that is Jordan Travis and Mackenzie Milton. But uh, if neither of those young men were available to play today, that automatically is going to lead to quite a bit of speculation, even if it is that Mike Norvell had this to say about why they weren't there or why it was the other two got the bulk of the reps. I've had three pretty, uh, pretty good, pretty good days. Uh, you know, the workload's been high. Uh, I really like, like the, uh, the competitiveness that we're showing just continuing to, to refine the uh, the fundamentals and the specifics of what we're trying to accomplish. So um, I thought it was a good day. You've really been uh, trying to get a good look at the, the two young quarterbacks. Uh, I've really been pleased with, you know, Chuba and uh, and Tate these last few days. You know, we've had a, had a big workload. You look at the scrimmage, and I would say, uh, you know, McKenzie and Jordan, you know, you know probably took overall about uh, 85% of the snaps. So we wanted to get a few days here uh, this week to, to let those young guys, you know, show their growth you know from the scrimmage and i think both those guys have really taken advantage of those opportunities here uh you'll get some reps with the first group and, and trying to mix and match that so um good work days um tomorrow will be a uh uh uh, special teams emphasis also continuing to work some uh, some other situations, you know, two minute drills, things like that. So uh, hopefully we we'll continue to build off of uh, you know, what we've been installing here this week and and be a little bit crisper tomorrow when it comes to that. Quarterback maintenance is that part of the course for you, or is it just? Yeah, absolutely. We're going to continue to continue to work those guys, making sure we get a great evaluation of each uh, you know, if each of the guys. Um, you know, uh, it's one of those things. You know, especially with the young guys. You know, there's times when you're working with the the third group and, and maybe, you know, the line combination that you're with is a little bit different, uh, you know, trying to get them matched up with some of the uh, uh, the better guys up front and some of those receivers to see how they respond. And uh, I think they've done a nice job with it. Well, that's one way to describe why it was your top two guys out there were not getting the reps that they would ordinarily get. Uh, uh, you know, uh, and anything else would be speculation on our part, but it certainly lends itself to speculation. There's no doubt about that. I'll also, just as an aside, say this, you know, we go through trends over the years. Uh, of course, it's true in football, just like it is in fashion. Uh, but in this case, I'm going to marry the two. We really need to get back to looser fitting baggy shorts that we wear while working out. This is highly unnecessary. What's going on here at Florida State and everywhere else, I presume. I don't know if this is being you know foisted upon us by Nike or what's going on. But can we not wear leotards out here while we're practicing football? This sir, is ridiculous. Sir, in the post-COVID world, the cost of materials has gone up exponentially. I'm so sorry that you like I, the days of Allen Iverson baggy let shorts. Let me tell you something. We are damn, uh, you know, a year away. We are reps away, if you will, from these dudes just taking the field naked and we're being told to grow up. This is ridiculous. We've got to stop the nonsense here. It is unsightly. It is pornographic. I think we need to get what? to a place. What are we doing? This is absurd. Put some pants on. I, I, I just, every time there's a still photo on our website on warchant.com, you go, oh, geez, moving on. Don't need to see all that. It's just ridiculous. So I'm assuming that's where you were just moments ago. Well, I just wanted to see if we had some practice photos that I could maybe glean something from. And the first thing I see is half naked dudes. Oh, I'm like, come on, man. We're practicing football out here. Put some pants on. It's not that hard. Uh, a slight tangent of what you're talking about. You have seen that trend in, in basketball. Guys are wearing the, it's the shorter shorts in basketball. I call out it's to not at 1984, Coach but Leonard it's, Hamilton to put an end to the nonsense. Leonard knows both eras. Let's not do this. It's like the famed picture in Sports Illustrated of Larry Bird and Magic Johnson guarding one another. You're like, oh my god, foul on both of you. This is just not going to get it. This is not what we do. Woo! Thank you, Troy, for saving us. Troy's going to be down from Wyoming for the UMass game because he wanted a guaranteed win. Good call. Diehard listener here in Wyoming. Coming to the UMass game, haven't been to a game since 2001. I'm hoping that's a guaranteed win. Go Knowles. Troy, you have been occupied, sir. I mean, 2001 is 20 years ago. You couldn't escape. Wyoming for a game in 20 years? Now, I don't know your circumstances, and I'm not judging you at all. I certainly hope not. 
We you know, thank you, Troy. I don't know. Yeah, certainly we do. Gracious. I, 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 no, I'm not being critical. I'm just saying, Jesus, 20 years. I, what I'm, what I am saying though here is, and I don't know how one would do it. I've not, you know, I'm not a rancher and I've never lived in the mountains and, or, uh, you know, any of the, the rocky terrain. Uh, but I, if I lived in Wyoming, even if this were not true, not the part about living in Wyoming, it is true. Let's say I'm living in Wyoming, but this next thing that I'm about to say, even if this wasn't an accurate, accurate descriptor, if when I came to town from Wyoming to go to a game far more frequently than every 20 years, Troy, I would, by the way, when I, upon landing and my friends would pick me up and, Oh, Cameron, it's great to see you. We're going to kick the bejesus out of UMass today. Yes, we are, Kyle. Can't wait. It's going to be a good time. And then somebody would say, where are you living in, in Wyoming? And I'd say, the high country. I live in the high country. Now, I don't know if that's true, if there's such a place in Wyoming or anything like that. I just think that that would be a great thing to say about my place in Wyoming. All right, go ahead, Troy. Let us know if there's a high country. Because there's a hill country in Texas. So I live in the high country, like a lot of my... uh cohorts who work the land we live in the high country it's hard living high country sounds better than hill country though hill country sounds like it could get a little squirrely I mean, oh the, hill country sounds like where the carnies live yeah you know banjos but right. i'm telling you the high country that's pristine that's the way it should be it's what happened when men first encountered the open plains and later the the mountains themselves inclement weather fighting to survive in the high country with their loved ones and wagons. So that's, I, that's what I would say every time high country might not exist, but I would tell you that I live there. In fact, I'm going to start telling people I live in the high country, no matter where I'm from. When they ask me, maybe as the uh, manifest destiny was manifesting and folks were traveling mm -hmm. to these reaches uh, of our fine nation, maybe there was a day in which maybe the dad of the family and the oldest son said, you know what? We're going to try out son number two and son number three, our third and fourth strongest men mm -hmm. in this family to handle the wagon. Because <laughs> we need to see. Can they handle the wagon? Can they handle the wagon? Here in the high country, things go south in a hurry. Can my third and fourth son, weak as they may be, rise up and yeah. handle the wagon in these difficult times? We need a proper evaluation of our children. True Seminole writes, Jeff, what's your thoughts? What are your thoughts on the possibility of West Virginia joining the ACC and who would come with them? Well, a lot of fans who still like to grow out a tail in the back of their head and wear raccoon skin. That's who would come with them. It would be an unsettling sight, barrels and such, a lot of possum eating, and uh, some yickety doos in the stands. You'd get a lot of that. If you're asking what other team, might join with them. I have no idea, but I don't want West Virginia. Us folk here in the high country have fought long and hard to keep them West oh, Virginians. Somehow we've moved the joining. high country yeah, from Wyoming yeah. to we Tallahassee. We have fought hard yeah. to keep those hooligans from the mountains of West Virginia from the high country. I think the the hotels in this area would price them out. You know, they'd say <laughs> six night minimum, four fifty a night. We don't need you. We're good. Oh, that is too good. All right, so there are new people. There are people who are jumping aboard saying, wait, what, what? Milton injury? What's going on? Where are our quarterbacks? What has happened? We don't know, guys. We don't know. It's not the answer you wanted uh, me to give you, but I, I just know that according to Coach Norvell, they really wanted to get a good look at quarterback number three and four today and, uh, and, and a lot of reps as of late. Uh, I think we'll take a lot of interest in what happens tomorrow and Friday. They have practice both days, as I understand it, and we'll be watching very closely to see uh, if if both or you know one or two or both quarterbacks are back. Yeah, I think the issue is put to rest the moment that you see on Warchant.com mm. in one of the morning practice updates, either tomorrow, Friday, or Saturday, if there is a pass thrown and or completed by Jordan Travis or Mackenzie Milton. At that point, the issue is over. Right now, the updates are only populated by Chubba Purdy and Tate Rodemaker. So maybe we can get to that point. You know what will lead to what Coach Norvell doesn't want? Even more speculative behavior from the press and fans alike if just one of them is back at practice tomorrow or the next day. Oh, the, sure. I mean, that is a nightmare yep. for him then. 
Uh, well, and if that bleeds into the weekend, which, I mean, who knows? We'll see what the updates say on Thursday, Friday, and Saturday at warchant.com. But then Sunday, when the scrimmage is over, I believe the availability we get is in the dead of night. It's like 9, 30, 10 o'clock on Sunday. I think the question will be, let's just say that Jordan returned to practice. Uh, well, Jordan returned to the updates. Excuse me, let me clean that up a little bit. Jordan returned to the updates. And Mackenzie hadn't yet. We could ask the question, how did Mackenzie do in the scrimmage? And we'll see what the answer would be. You want to hear something funny? Uh, and I and good on you, Mike, for bringing this to my attention on Twitter. Uh, there was a tweet in which uh, Marina Amaro tweeted out on this day in 1957, baseball player Richie Ashburn fouls and hits fan Alice Roth. Okay, so in 1957, this player, Richie Ashburn, fouled off a pitch and it hit this woman, Alice Roth. So that in and of itself is whatever. You're like, oh, well, did she die? It's just a historic moment. Like, what happened here? I want to read more. So as you read more, you begin to laugh. Pretty hard. Hits fan Alice Roth twice in the same game oh, <laughs> while playing the Phillies. The first hit hit Alice in the face and broke her nose. Now, that's a toughie. And I don't, you know. I but mean, she's tougher if she's still there. Oh, no, get this. So she gets hit in the face and breaks her nose. She's obviously in a lot of pain. They, The, the, the medical personnel come racing to her aid after wearing a, a foul ball, and they're putting her on the stretcher, and he fouls off the next pitch and hits her again. <laughs> that is fantastic. What a great tweet. That is ruthless. 1957, ruthless. buddy. <laughs> so I want to know, was the stretcher right next to the seat? Was it like six rows up, and you're just like, you got to be kidding me. I don't know, but that is really good. The ball is just following Alice. Foul balls galore. Much like once a year, I go to the QVC video of the man falling off the ladder just so that I can hear the commentary of that woman say, and that has never happened. It's just so good. I mean, her timing, she's my hero. And that has never happened. You know? But I watch that once a year because I like to laugh. I like to watch the grape stomping woman oh, from the news fall off the <laughs> stage and don't like that noise <gasps> no no man <laughs> i watched that to laugh and then i think uh the third thing that i go and look up is a picture of a bat that flew from the hands i can't remember i know the rays were playing but it flew from the hands of a player and this guy's daydreaming he's not paying attention and it somebody took a still photo this should have won the pulitzer Somebody took a still photo of the bat squished up against this guy's face in the stands. But the part that makes me laugh isn't the bat connecting with his face. And by the way, he's okay. But, I mean, he, he wasn't in the moment. But what's funny is the surrounding faces of the people who saw the bat coming and sought shelter. Because they're all like, ah, one guy's cracking up. He's three rows up, and he makes me laugh to this day. He doesn't flinch because he knows the bat is no threat to him. But that it is going to hit that guy in the face, this this guy has to be a sociopath. In the time it took for a bat to fly from a hand and hit a dude in the face, and that guy hits the snapshot, he's already started laughing. He's laughing at the point of connection without knowing whether the guy's okay. He's already going, ha, yeah. ha, yeah, that's, like uh, you can. <laughs> that's next level. People can enjoy schadenfreude at other people's expenses, oh, yeah. but that's next level. Uh, it's still, I love that picture. Every time I see it, I'm like, oh my God, that is really, really good. That really makes me laugh. Sorry, I'll get it back on track. I just thought I'd have a little fun with you there. As an aside. I don't, what, what, we could speculate recklessly for, speculate about the quarterback. I, I was going to say, you minutes. want me to speculate for another 45 minutes on that? I don't know what to think. I do think it's highly unusual. I I'm left to wonder if, you know, my personal, and we'll never get this information. They don't have to give it to us. But as somebody who is reading practice reports around the ACC, reading practice reports around the NFL, reading practice reports for any team that's on our schedule, quite frankly, and really any of the bigger games, because now I'm excited like everybody else is for all the big games in the opening weekend. And, you know, listen, I, I like to gamble. I never shied away from that. Even before it was legal, I gambled illegally with a bookie all the time. And I, uh, and, and now I can do it legally, which is great. But what I'm telling you is that <laughs> you're expanding the people you're telling this message to 
yeah. it went from terrestrial airways in Tallahassee to terrestrial plus podcast and now war chant TV. Yeah, now everybody knows. But uh, like they didn't know already. But uh, what what I'm saying is the point is I'm trying to glean as much information as possible from these camps about starters, backups, what's happening, who's looking good, who isn't, especially on teams where there are a number of replacements. So, for example, Alabama, obviously always loaded for bear, but Alabama uh, is replacing all but three starters on that offense. Now, they're loaded on defense, but they, again, that's a lot to replace. And you juxtapose that against their first opponent, Miami. Miami has the most – well, they're one of three teams – that has the level of experience, returning experience, up over like 90%. It's insane. So, you know, you, you factor that in when you're making a decision about how you think about that game and what that point spread is. Point is, I'm reading these practice reports. I'm finding out what's going on in all these camps. And we're not the only camp where, mysteriously, two starters or two people projected to be a critical part of the team miss a practice or two or miss three days. And invariably, when you read that, if you go to what those people who write those practice reports are saying, or you go to their boards, immediately people just assume, and, and this is this is where we live, this is what, the times in which we live, COVID. You know, I, I don't know that, but and we won't know that, right? But I would assume. I mean, I think mysterious it's kind of a, absences yes, at other programs, critical players at other programs, right? Currently, yes, yeah. Yeah, every day. I mean, read a Michigan practice report, read an Ohio State practice report, read an Alabama practice report, a Miami practice report, a Florida practice report. Unless they expressly state that this guy hurt his knee and missed practice today, or this guy's dealing with a bad ankle and he's in a boot and he's going to be out for a week, a lot of times it is just left out there like, well, yeah, interestingly enough, the you know, three, the top three receivers missed practice these last three days. Oh, did they really? They're all part of the same position group. They're all watching film together. They're all in the same meeting room, and they all just happen to miss practice at the same time. Of course, that's what you're going to say. You're going to go, well, I, I'm, I'm going to guess somebody was exposed, and they all got to make sure that everything's good. That would be a general guess for other programs. Yes, it, yes, yes. yes that would be. But I, yes, that's it's a guess. I do not know that to be the case here. It's just a face, a safe Guess that you're going to encounter some of that. Jeff Cabot, Show 93.3 Real Talk Radio. If you know me, you know how I feel about supporting local. You also know that I love dad jokes. So it really bugs me when somebody I know calls anyone other than Paul's Termite and Pest Control. This year marks 50 years that Paul's has been servicing our community as a family-owned business. That really means something. All treatment decisions are made right here. Not some corporate headquarters 100 miles away, but right here. Local knowledge means they know exactly when and how to beat certain issues that are unique to our region. All decisions about North Florida made by North Floridians and being local doesn't always mean small. Paul's is the largest locally owned termite pest and lawn company in the region, but you'll always get the small town treatment and quick service also. Paul's offers a same day treatment guarantee if you call by noon. If you see something in the morning that's not supposed to be in your house, call Paul's and they'll get them all that same afternoon. It's that easy. For the elimination of termites or any other pest and for a greener lawn too, visit callpauls.com. Let me tell you what T-Spark stands for. It stands for strength, commitment, teamwork, and heart. We don't ever quit until we've got nothing left to give. Our team is unstoppable. Want a guaranteed win? Call T-Spark Enterprises for your next roofing or construction project. We conquer all peaks. T-SparkConstruction.com. License number CCC1331204. It's pool season, and the huge pool at Killarne Country Club is ready for you. Pool memberships are just $5.99 for the season through September and come with poolside service and unlimited access to the 19th hole. Live the country club life without the country club price. And don't miss the weekly themed Thursday night dinners featuring exquisitely prepared meals paired with the best wines. Stay up to date with all the events and club deals at KillarneCC.com. That's KillarneCC.com. I'm called Swain Pools and Spas. Now I'm soaking up the fun when I want to. Swain Pools and Spas is your pool and spa everything store. Swain sells them. Swain repairs them. Swain renovates them. Swain services them. Swain even has pool and spa supplies. And they'll test your water, too. Look for the big Swain sign on Tharp Street. Call them at 386-7113 or online at swainpools.com. Swain Pools and Spas. 
When you're looking to get anything done, chances are you've got a guy for that. And when it comes to your car or truck repairs, the team at Tallahassee Car Care are your guys. The kind of guys that have motor oil running through their veins. The kind of guys that prefer grease remover over frou-frou flowery scented soaps. And these guys will tell you the truth with no fluff. When your car or truck needs any kind of repairs, look for Tallahassee Car Care on West Tharp Street, right behind Swain Pools and Spas. Tallahassee Car Care. Is your business interested in exploring safe, secure, remote access capabilities for your employees? Not sure whether to go with a Mac or with a Windows system? Call the folks at Mac and More Systems and they can give you the guidance to make the best decision for your needs. Visit MacAndMoreSystems.com today. Choose hearth and patio for custom fireplaces, maintenance, outdoor grills, kitchens, fire pits, lighting, and so much more. Check out all of hearth and patio's options online at hearthpatiotallahassee.com. Hearth and patio, they keep the home fires burning. We all want more energy, more strength, more results. Well, welcome to Orange Theory Fitness as you take a step towards feeling more alive today. Backed by science, Orange Theory's heart rate monitored workout is scientifically designed to keep heart rates in a target zone, spiking metabolism and increasing energy. Orange Theory Fitness is a one-of-a-kind group personal training workout resulting in more energy, visible toning, and extra calorie burn for up to 36 hours. Experience more vibrant life today with Orange Theory Fitness. To find out more, go to orangetheoryfitness.com. The Jeff Ken Show is a production of the Warchant.com Multimedia Network. Check out Warchant.com today for the latest news inside Florida State Athletics. That's Warchant.com. Now, back to Jeff on Real Talk 93.3. Out at Florida State. I'm not saying it's not a real thing, but I wouldn't leap to the conclusion that Treshawn Ward is going to be a star for Florida State this year. I've seen some of that because he bet on himself and he's done well for himself, and I'm happy for him, but I don't think he's a difference maker for Florida State. I think he's a reliable player, though. You need somebody in pass pro, you need somebody as an outlet out of the backfield who can make somebody miss. One of those players who you say, oh man, okay, it's a pleasant surprise. You know, he's somebody who adds to the repertoire. He's not the feature player, but I think he's going to be a nice, a nice role player for us in certain situations. Yeah. You know, what ends up happening is you don't like to ignore the good stories with the personnel that you have because you're thinking about how they would fit if the personnel was where it should be. And and that's more on me. You know, I, I find myself doing that quite a bit. I'll be like, well, it's nice for this team, but I'm always thinking about, and it's not a slight. I mean, he's come in there, worked hard. He's, earned it and he's turned heads and that's important and that's great i think about if that room is where we need it to be there's probably not much of a story there i don't think he's transcendent players no no i agree but again these are uh these are the players we have currently <laughs> but they can still be positive stories and uh, still make some plays for us still make some key plays i, I just it seems like from all the reports around camp that Treshawn is the type of player that you can count on to be where he's supposed to be that is really important as you're trying to build back to something because you better be detail sound. You know, you could have more talent, but if you're not where you're supposed to be, the way we block it up, that's a pick six or something ridiculous, like a, a backside pressure where there's no pass pro, where there should be. You need reliable people until you can get really, really good reliable people. Yeah, agreed. Absolutely. Uh, I was reading Bill Conley's article on ESPN.com, Insider for College Football's 25 Most Important Players in 2021. And you know what you realize with all these guys that have come back because of the COVID year that they were given, and in some cases they had already, you know, already redshirted. It's that, it occurs to you that there are guys you're like, he's still playing college football. Sweet Jesus! I remember when Carlos Huerta kicked at Miami because it seemingly felt like Carlos Huerta kicked at Miami for 16 years, and I remember being in the stands when they announced Carlos Huerta to come out and kick, and I'm like, again. Good God, Carlos Huerta. You're balding. You got a pot belly. You owe child support. You had a failed business. You've moved cities twice. You're still kicking here in Miami. What are we doing? I believe those are parking tickets. <laughs> but there were a lot of names 
that I was reminded of as I went through and looked at all these guys. Like, God, that guy is still there. Justin Ross is still at Clemson. That's the legacy of this, though. You're going to be feeling that for the next three years, four years potentially, if you had some stud freshmen that played last season. Because they're, you know, this is a freebie. It's a freebie, not just for this upcoming season, but forevermore. Clemson's linebacker, his name escapes me right now. I don't know if it's Bullware, but no, no, he's no, he's yeah. not. There's no uh, way he's still playing there. No. Well, the kid that was there this year, I, I'll have to. I mean, he's the guy in their in their linebacking core. I was like, my God, he must be thirty. He may very well be thirty. Well, and I'll tell you something else that's weird. For example, he hasn't been at this particular place very long, but because we've heard him talked about forever and a day, Spencer Rattler at Oklahoma, who's got the greatest name for a quarterback in college football, I feel like, God, I, I'm tired of hearing about Spencer Rattler, but he hasn't been there very long. No, like five minutes. He was a redshirt freshman last fall. But, I mean, it's just, again, over and over and over again, and he's got a great supporting cast. He's got a ton of great players. Their offense, Lincoln Riley's offense, always hums. He's going to put up huge numbers, and it's just going to be like next year when we're doing this, if he's still there, we're going to be like, my man is a red shirt sophomore. He's got several more years to play. This is absurd. Yes, if you're a really good college football player without much of a pro future, you really can make hay. With these five to six years that you get, you got a lot of time. A lot of records will fall, by the way. Ah, uh, good point. Yeah, a lot of records are going to career fall. totals, yeah, career yeah, totals and all that. Uh, Jackson writes, and we appreciate you, Jackson. What player will lead FSU in rushing yards versus Notre Dame? I'm thinking Jason Corbin. Me too, Jackson. We're in agreement there. I actually think Corbin's going to consistently be the answer to that question. I think he's due to have a good season. I think he's finally healthy. He's one of the bright spots at camp. He's got a spring in his step. He's an incredibly mature young man, well built. He's put the time in in the offseason, but he's got that spring back in his step. He's versatile. Uh, he'll get some extra yardage at the end of runs. Uh, so I like him. He's not a breakaway runner. He's not going to change the scoreboard for you uh, with an 80-yard run or anything like that. But he's really, really steady and reliable, and he's very physical, uh, and he can catch the ball. So I, I like Corbin quite a bit. I think he'll get the most touches, most rushing attempts. I don't know about most yards, though. Because the question is, can you consistently gain yardage against Notre Dame's front with our offensive line in our situation? That question remains against every single team we play. It's true, but that would be why I'd say Jordan Travis may be the guy who leads us in rushing yards. Again, it's kind of a trick answer because I think he's obviously talking about running backs. I think that's the spirit of the question. How about this? How about this? Let's delve a little further into your hypothesis. Okay, you believe it's likely Jordan Travis because you don't trust our offensive line to create running lanes for Deshaun Corman to have a more traditional day at the office. Right. 20 he carries, 86 yards, a touchdown. Like, I get it. Those aren't great numbers, but you would be, you know, that's a more traditional I can see like 18 for 57, you know, Ouch. And, and like a 12-yard run for a touchdown yeah. in there somewhere. Okay, so let me do this then instead. Would those yards from Jordan Travis derive from Designed quarterback runs or broken plays? Yes. <laughs> the answer is yes. Uh, uh, I think the question, the answer to that would depend on Mackenzie Milton's status, right? Mm -hmm. How many snaps do you get from Mackenzie Milton? Is it half the snaps? None of the snaps? 80% of the snaps? Because if it's a, the higher that number goes, the more designed runs Jordan Travis is going to have called for him. The lower that number is, the more scramble plays I think Jordan's going to have to create with his own legs. As opposed to somebody else. It's weird how comfortable we've gotten talking about Jordan Travis in a game against Notre Dame. Well, yes, but I think even before this week and all of the clutter and confusion over the last 24 to 36 hours, I think it was fair to expect that Jordan was going to be on the field for a lot of snaps one way or the other, right? I mean, like, yeah, now we're just thinking that maybe as the primary guy, if there's any problems that have cropped up, which we'll see. We're in the midst of the summer of more life, and it's an opportunity for you to take great advantage of the savings that Orange Theory provides, but more importantly, improve your fitness. Looking forward to this afternoon's workout. If you're an active member and for a friend in August and September, you get a bunch of discounted prices over the next three months for you and your membership. If you're a non-active member, you either canceled or currently froze your account for whatever reason, you want to get back after it, just sign back up and unfreeze that sucker, and you'll get a discounted membership for the next three months. And if you're an elite or premier member, you're going to want to refer a lot of people to you get $30 off for three months. Premier members will get $50 off for three months. That's uh, 150 bones 
you're saving. That's uh, a lot of working out for free, basically, and it's a good time. It's my friends at Orange Theory Fitness, orangetheoryfitness.com. Your local news now. United Partners for Human Service postponed the third annual TLH Beer Festival 2021, citing a surge in cases of COVID-19 and low vaccinations. Organizers with the event said they are working to reschedule the event. The sold-out event was scheduled for August 28th at the Donald L. Tucker Civic Center. The Northern District of Florida announced two Tallahassee residents arrested during Operation Stolen Innocence have received federal sentences. According to the court, 26-year-old Shante Kirksey was sentenced Monday to 210 months in federal prison after pleading guilty to to one count of production of child pornography. And 32-year-old Destin Banks was sentenced to 130 months in federal prison after pleading guilty to one count of coercing or enticing a minor to engage in prostitution. Kirksey and Banks' prison sentence will be followed by 10 years of supervised release, and they will both be required to register as sex offenders and will be subject to all sex offender conditions. This is Rachel Linnae with your World Talk 93.3 Local News Update, brought to you by Macamore Systems, Tallahassee's go-to Mac store. Check them out online at macamoresystems.com. This is meteorologist Paul Frombley with your Real Talk 93.3 weather update. A mix of clouds and sun this afternoon with a chance for scattered thunderstorms. Daytime highs approaching 92. South winds 5 to 10 miles per hour. Chance for scattered thunderstorms tonight. Lows dip down to about 75. Partly cloudy skies. Sunshine mixed with clouds at times tomorrow. Chance for scattered thunderstorms. Highs level off around 94. This report is brought to you by the Lawn Johns. For all your landscaping and lawn care needs, visit thelawnjohns.com. Right now, 92. Hey, Tallahassee. This is Sarah with Seminole Autoglass. There's so much more to autoglass than most people know. It's part of the car's structural integrity and one of the few things keeping you in the car in the event of a collision, which is why it's so important who you use. The big insurance company is going to gripe and complain anyway. Don't let them tell you where to go. Go with who you know. Seminole Autoglass has over 25 years experience. We use the highest quality products from start to finish because we know the importance of what we do. Experience the Seminole difference. We are more than just a glass company. We are your local autoglass experts. Better call Seminole we all want more energy more strength more results well welcome to orange theory fitness as you take a step towards feeling more alive today backed by science orange theory's heart rate monitored workout is scientifically designed to keep heart rates in a target zone spiking metabolism and increasing energy orange theory fitness is a -a one-of-a-kind group personal training workout resulting in more energy visible toning and extra calorie burn for up to 36 hours experience more vibrant life today with orange theory fitness to find out more go to orangetheoryfitness.com Greg Tish. Hey guys, this is Greg Tish, and you can listen to my show, The Greg Tish Show, every Monday through Friday from 6 a.m. to 9 a.m. But I am very excited, Matty Rowe, about this Thursday at 7 a.m. Who do we have? Bert Kreischer. The Machine. The Machine is here, and he's going to talk about the Birdie Boy Relax. And I'm so excited to talk to The Machine about his time in Tallahassee and his time at Florida State. Thursday morning, 7 a.m. This is going to be one heck of an interview. The Greg Tish Show, Monday through Friday, 6 to 9 a.m., only on Real Talk 93.3. The Jeff Cameron Show, brought to you by Orange Theory Fitness. Two Tallahassee locations, Midtown on Thomasville Road, and Northside in the Village Common Shopping Center. Online at orangetheoryfitness.com. At their respective university. Adrian Martinez is again starting at quarterback for Nebraska this year. Is that right? Adrian Martinez is again. My goodness. Starting at quarterback for Nebraska this year. Nebraska was in the news today for the wrong reasons. Although if you're a Nebraska fan, you say, no, Jeff, those are the right reasons. We are trying to rectify this situation, which is desperate indeed. How many wins do you believe S&P Plus points to for Florida State in the ACC this year, Tom? One more time, I'm sorry. How many wins in the ACC does Bill Conley's S&P Plus project for Florida State in the ACC this year? In the ACC, all right. Just the ACC. So we're throwing out the two wins over J-State and UMass. Throw out the wins over UMass and J-State. Give me which games. Three. Oh, which games? Well, okay, well, if you'd like, you can pick which games. That's a fun process, too. Uh, Syracuse. Syracuse. They have a 79% chance to win that game. Yes, okay. I agree. That's one. That's the best odds of the bunch, by the way. No, I would think so. Um, and every other ACC game, Florida State, according to S&P Plus, go look it up if you need to, has less than a 50% chance to win. 
Is that right? Every other ACC game. So the next best is Louisville at home? The next best is at Wake Forest, okay. 49%. Ooh, wow. Then it's Louisville, 48%. And then there's a drop off. I'm assuming to the next one. Actually, surprisingly, there's not. It's 48 percent and 47 percent, respectively, with BC and NC State. So he's bullish on the Knolls. All right, S and P. Not, not really. It, it, he's got 3.1 wins in the ACC for Florida State okay. this year. Obviously, he's going to project a surefire win against Syracuse, and then in the relative toss-up games, those again being Wake Forest, Louisville, Boston College, and NC State. He's figuring out at least two wins in those games. We could do better than that, but I think that's a fair assessment. We've got to prove it, and we've got to skew the S&P Plus a little bit. Well, let me tell you the two wins that I would lean towards, oddly, uh, and it, not oddly at all. I think I think it's, it's, it's fair to say that most people believe we'll beat Wake Forest in Louisville, right? If that's the case, combine it with Syracuse. Yeah, yeah you have yeah. yourself a good month of September. Yeah, that's those good. Are, those, are your, those are your ones. The likely losses read as follows in terms of a percentage chance, according to S&P Plus. Notre Dame, we have a 32% chance to win. Miami, an 18% chance to win. That is hmm. That strikes me as interesting. It's November, man. Florida, 13%. North Carolina, 13%. What? Clemson, 6%. Oh, man. FSU should improve this year, but a schedule that features five projected top 25 teams, including North Carolina and Miami in cross-division play, could keep the win total tamped down. Uh, that's kind of per our talking point, that the schedule is pretty ruthless. Yeah, this is not a get-right schedule. Yeah, it's, <laughs> it's not. It's not even laid out that way. The finish is absolutely brutal to the schedule. We had our worst defensive rankings since 2009 last year. Uh, we got nothing from Marvin Wilson. We didn't, unfortunately, get much from Hampson Asheldean because of injury. Both those guys were gone. He actually showed up and played, though. I, I couldn't no, believe it. I know it. you were stunned. Good yeah. for him. But you do lose Asante Samuel Jr., obviously. Uh, they're basically excited and would project and say, okay, look, if you want to get excited about players on that side of the ball that can help change the fortunes of Florida State on defense, they're the guys we've already been talking about. But I think there are more. There are Jermaine Johnson, Pierre Thomas, Jamie Robinson, Jarvis Brownlee, Travis J. I mean, there are a lot of guys. I that's actually well, a fun exercise. And Mike was raving about Akeem Den at free safety. Mm -hmm. And you've got Kevin Knowles, who we think at least by the end of the season is going to be getting a lot more reps, right? Because he's got an idea of what he wants to do, and that's inflict pain and tackle in open space and get downhill. Something that we sorely need. We've been very passive on the outside. You've got options there. I think that interior of the D-line is going to be okay, too. They just can't suffer an injury. But I think they're going to be more consistent, how could you not be, than last year's group what they looked like on paper last year was one of the best interior defensive lines in the country, and it wasn't just us saying it in Tallahassee. Pundits around the country said that Florida State's interior of the D-line is top five. Never played out that way. This group won't be picked in the top 20, but I'll bet they'll be, be more consistent than they were last yeah, year. Yeah, and S&P Plus is just a tool. It doesn't mean it's going to happen the way that those numbers project. Those are based on a formula, and there's no you know foolproof foolproof. A formula you, you can look at that and say okay well i see what it's waiting yeah and why we've got to skew the numbers our way well and listen s p cannot i don't think rightly calculate what it means for example to have a normal off season to have real practices real time in the weight room proper nutrition conditioning all of it right the bonds being uh you know bridged and made in that off season together a buy-in a locker room transformation. It can't do that. Right. It, it, it doesn't it doesn't have a formula for that. Not to mention a transfer at quarterback. We'll see what the status is there. But transfer at quarterback, uh, it's basically like getting a transfer at tight end because Jordan Wilson didn't play last year. And a I think he's a big part of what we're going to do. I, I, I really believe that, that the tight end room is not good, but it has a chance to be greatly improved because of him and Jackson West. There's also a transfer at receiver, interior offensive line with Dylan Gibbons. You got two rush ends that are transfers. You got a transfer safety slash defensive back. Actually, several of those. Yeah, that S P plus cannot account for any of that stuff because what is that? Out of let's call it your top 30 players on in either phase of the ball, offense or defense, eight of those guys at minimum are going to be transfers. 
That's tough to account for. I wish this was a year in which we as fans could complain about the schedule in the way that it's boring with a bunch of automatic wins. You know, I it's funny. What are you gonna learn? I, it's all I, easy yeah, wins. Well, and it's funny because when you're when you're down on your luck and you're struggling, and or if you're trying to build a program to a place where all of a sudden they'll get noticed and you have a chance to corral some of the better recruits uh and they'll they'll take your phone calls. You you kind of take that old Bill Schneider approach at K-State, where they played nobody ever. Their schedule was an embarrassment to schedules everywhere. But they kept winning games, of course. And after a while, when you're putting together repeated nine and ten win seasons, you're going to bowls everywhere every year. The brand is expanding. People are beginning to recognize, oh, they're winning over there. They actually they do some things year to year. They're, you know, they they're not putting together these terrible seasons. All of a sudden, you lure one of the upper echelon recruits in, like Bishop or somebody like that. And the next thing you know, you got a guy. And now you got a marquee player at an important position because you've accumulated all these wins. Now, Florida State's not Kansas State. It's a much more prestigious program. It uh, has built all kinds of cachet over a very long period of time. But it would be nice to glean some of the benefits of which I speak with a season of lackluster foes in which you amass eight, nine wins because kids aren't paying attention, man. You know, if you walk into a living room the year after a nine-win season and say, we're getting it turned around. You know, when I first got here, we won three games, but we won nine last year. They don't go, yeah, but coach, let's really look into those nine. They're not doing that. High school kids aren't doing that. You're selling the bowl and the wins and the total turnaround and all that stuff. And all of a sudden, you know, you got, got a little something. Uh, that's all I, that, that's what I mean when I say that. It's not that I'm afraid of competition. Again, I always laugh at that because I'm not playing any games. Also because it's not our history. It's not Florida State's history. Florida State's history is to play big-time opponents out of conference anytime, anywhere. I get all that. But you're just trying to get it turned around, move it in the right direction. And even if that is a, a bit of fool's gold because of a weak schedule, it's a way to sell the program not being a loser. Well, I can tell you, and but that's the thing, though. You've got to sell a reasonable message to the kids so they can judge you by the expectations that you set for yourself. And, and I can tell you through the conversations I had when I first joined the staff at Warchant about how did all those recruiting visits go, all those weekends when they had the kids, what kind of messages were being sent to the kids? And it was downplaying this very season in front of us. It was, you know, hopefully we get to six, and if we get to six, we'll be okay. That's the message internally over there is, if they can get to that number, they're going to retain an awful lot of this class, if not most everybody in this class. We and think. that's important. Well, that's we, we think. Sure. Well, I mean, you know, uh, there could be some NIL money coming from Alabama towards the end or, or Georgia that might sway somebody's opinion. But that's the thing. We also did a video on Warchan TV about what if FSU scored the upset? What would that be? You know, what? how monumental would that be for the recruiting visit? And Michael's answer in the video was, oh, it would be massive. It would be great for kids that are looking at Florida State but aren't necessarily committed to Florida State. But the coaches are downplaying the season to the incoming recruits and saying, listen, just we're going to improve. Stick with us because you're going to be the reason that we take a leap, but we're going to improve a little bit this year. They are downplaying the expectations, not selling to the class of 2022 that this is going to be a 9 or 10 win season. They're saying, bear with us. Pardon our dust, if you will. Smart. Uh, That's good. Yeah, yeah. I, I like reasonable coaches who set reasonable expectations because then kids will probably believe them more when they see a setback or two. The honest approach with a kid about why a you desperately want them. Maybe you wouldn't phrase it desperately, but why you see this great value they provide for your football team and what you think of them as a player. Uh, I think that, that the brutal, honest and pragmatic approach is the way to go when you've had is, you know, a stretch like we've had over the last four years. They're not blind. I mean, they, they do understand what they, you won three games last year, and you weren't competitive against any of the good teams. Uh, you know, Jermaine Johnson and others that said yes to Florida State, somewhat surprisingly, all noted at one time or another when being asked why that they appreciated the candor. Well, in and of itself, you know, it may be sad that we have to be pleased when we hear that coaches are being reasonable, but given the shenanigans of the previous shenanigans. three to four years prior to Norvell's arrival, it, you do have to ask the basic question. They're not used car salesmen, are they? They're not setting unreasonable expectations, are they? And the answer is unequivocally no. They're setting realistic expectations. Sell a vision you believe in and tell them it's not going to be easy. T-Spark Enterprises, roofing and construction services, proud sponsors of the Jeff Cameron Show, and whose services I've used, Tom has used, and many others of our listeners have as well. You can count on them 
Hopefully the storm did not do damage to your humble abode. But if so, if you're looking for experienced roofing crews, a great company to work for, all that other stuff, but also need the help at your house, then I'm selling employees. And That's correct. On multiple levels. That's what I'm doing around here, buddy. Uh, make sure you get our guys from T-Spark in there. T-Spark Enterprises available to help come inspect the roof. And because T-Spark is uh, one phone call away and he can not only fix the roof, but also license general contractor, they can also take care of any structural damage done there as well. T-Spark Enterprises, roofing and construction. Applications, onboarding, payroll, termination. Business owners and managers, you know these are the processes that take away too much time from what you do best. But what if there was a locally owned, responsive solution that would charge you a fraction of the big national payroll companies? Sound too good to be true? It's not. North Florida Payroll Services is Tallahassee owned for nearly 15 years. And in that time, their prices have never changed. The reason North Florida Payroll Services can do that? Exceptional customer service that constantly evolves with the latest technology. From application to termination, for turnkey service for your payroll and HR services, trust a Tallahassee expert and save yourself time and money. North Florida Payroll Services, online at NorthFloridaPayroll.com. People trust Sellers for better tile, carpet, and hardwood flooring. Sellers Flooring Advisor Ryan Fitzgerald. We understand most people don't come in with great knowledge of what they're looking for or what they need. So at Sellers, what we try to do is use our expertise to guide you through the process. Get Sellers working for you. We make it easy, and we have the experts on staff to get you where you need to be, and we give you the options. On Capital Circle Northeast, just north of Mayhan Drive, call 656-8453. Online at Sellers Tile. Com. Stay cool this summer by planning ahead now. Call EB Heating and Air and ask for the AC tune up special for just 99 bucks. 99 bucks now can save you hundreds later. Call 575 9119. That's 575 9119 for EB Heating and Air. When the forgotten poor are in need of healing, they wait for a ship unlike any other. Mercy Ships, a floating hospital staffed by volunteers, heroes of mercy who donate their time to save lives. Every human has the right to have a place at the table of the human race. If you could just see the smiles that you get when lives have been changed, then it would make it all worth it. To learn more about Heroes of Mercy, go to mercyships.org. You went online to switch your car insurance to Progressive so you could save money, but then... Through photos of his kickball team from 2011. Oh, looks like they won the championship that year. Then he moved to Tulsa. Oh, a new tattoo. Yes, they said it was easy to save hundreds on car insurance with Progressive, but they forgot about the rest of the internet. Progressive Casualty Insurance Company and affiliates national average savings by new customer survey who saved in 2019. If you weren't the owner of Gordo's and all those wonderful restaurants, Eddie, what would you be doing? You know, I, I think I'd want to be a I'd want to be, I don't know what I'd want to be, a boat captain or a cowboy. Do you know how to use a, a lasso? No. You'd have to do that if you were a cowboy. Yeah, but I've never even been on a horse. It's not my place to be on a horse. I agree. And the horse thanks you. Gordo's bringing the flavor and flair of Cuban food to Tallahassee since 1996. The Jeff Cameron Show is a production of the Warchant.com Multimedia Network. Check out Warchant.com today for the latest news inside Florida State Athletics. That's Warchant.com. Now, back to Jeff on Real Talk Can you believe it, buddy? It's only two months away. I can believe it. Because that's the way hockey is. Yeah, it's uh, ruthless. I, I'm not going to bank on a third, by the way, a third straight title. That would be greedy, but it's possible. Excessive, right? Today the 18th. Today is the 18th. Today is the 18th. Let's get to some probables, shall we? Brought to you by North Florida Payroll Services. 
Locally owned for nearly 15 years, offering payroll and HR services, including full online applicant onboarding and integration into payroll. Save your company money and headaches today. Head to NorthFloridaPayroll.com. It's time for, how you say, with the pitching, uh, probables? Hey, before I get to him, Panama Jack says, NC State, Wake Forest, Louisville, Syracuse is four wins in my book, which means Jacksonville State and UMass gets you to six. I think you projected the right wins if we get to six. Panama Jack. Panama Jack is betting the over. He is betting the over, and the way he gets there are the wins that I would select. Tall task, two of those games. NC State in particular, oddly enough. Day games underway. Cubs are pounding the Reds 6-1. to one. They may finally win a game. It's been a little while. Cleveland's beating Minnesota 4-2 to two currently. So let's get to the remainder of the game. The, uh, the Reds are kind of like Rod Stew, right? They had a run in the 70s and <laughs> haven't done much since. Uh, Mets going to start McGill against East Scalfini. That's on the Mets. It's happening right now. It's going on while we speak. That 13-game stretch for the Mets? Yeah, so far they're 0-5. Barrios going for Toronto. Gray going for Washington. Boston will throw Pavetta tonight. The Yankees will throw Haney. We've got Shohei Atani going tonight for the Angels. All right. Scooble. Going to go for Detroit. Mont. That'd be Charlie. Going for Atlanta. Lazardo going for the Marlins. We've got uh, Watkins and... Uh, is that... Tampa, Tampa Bay has starters that play all the time. Lewis Head is starting for Tampa Bay, and I always crack up. I'm like, well, who the hell is that guy? And then you look him up, you're like, oh, they fleeced somebody for him, and he's great. Peralta, Flaherty, only Flaherty. Milwaukee and St. Louis. We got Gonzalez and Fultonevich. That's Seattle and Texas. Oakland and the White Sox are going to go Irvin and Lynn. Grinky and Singer in the late game, Houston and Kansas City, Philadelphia and Arizona, Suarez, Castellanos. My Buccos lost by another run last night. Just, oh, just man. One, just one. Four to three. They've lost two to one and four to three against the Dodgers. Giving it a good run. You don't get much for being game. The Bodie once said, you don't get much. That would be Dean. J.T. Brubaker going for the Buccos. He's not good. The Dodgers may throw a fan out of the stands. They have not announced yet, but I wouldn't put it past them. Likely a win for the Dodgers. Well, they eject people all the time. And that is a look at those that shall reside on the bump. Boom. Woody's got a positive outlook on what today meant at practice with Jordan Travis not being out there, McKenzie Milton not being out there, or seemingly not being out there. I wasn't at practice today. I don't want to steer you wrong, but since the report only noted that you had the third and fourth string quarterbacks, Chubba Purdy and Mr. Rodemaker out there getting the vast majority of the reps, then okay. He says, Travis is injury prone. Milton hasn't played in years coming off a major injury. Norvell is looking to establish his third or maybe even second string quarterback. Yeah, maybe. Maybe. Well, if I am Chubba Purdy or Tate Rodemaker, I, that's what I'm thinking. That sure. If I win the job over the other guy, the other young buck in our system, that means I could be the second string quarterback. Because of the injury history of the two guys in front of me, yeah, that could mean significant snaps for me if I take care of business. Not for nothing, man. You put your uh, nose to the grindstone, you go to work, and you try to get better. It's it's a novel concept, and along the way, occasionally things work out for you, and you get your shot. And if you put in the time, and you've done the studying, and you've worked really hard physically and mentally, maybe you make the most of it, and maybe transferring is not the idea, but rather hard work is. I know it's a, a novel concept. I'm not saying there's ever a time that you can't transfer. There are plenty of times where maybe it would be best for you to do so. But I do think in this set of circumstances, it's not like Purdy and Rodemaker don't have skill sets that translate. They do. They can play. Uh, they got to get confident. They've got to be uh, obviously better day to day than they've been up to this point. And, you know, injuries have played a part in that too. Handicapping it, who would have the lead right now in your mind? Chubba? To start? Oh, between those two. Between those two. Well, every time I'm at practice, it's Tate Rodemaker. He, he's a practice in Jesse. 
Good work out of you. Good work, Matthew. Thanks to all of you who listened and or chatted. We appreciate you very, very much. Be well. Have a great night. Talk to you tomorrow.